In 2022, the United States will be competing at their 11th Men's World Cup. They have never advanced beyond the quarterfinals, but US men's national team players are increasingly making an impact in European football. The US women's national team are four-time world champions and four-time Olympic gold winners. And the team has consistently featured not only some of the finest players in the world, but also athletes who transcend the sport itself. So what does this all mean for soccer in the US? How big has it become? Now, we're not asking how big MLS has become in the US, because that's a different question. We're concerned with the popularity of the sport as a whole, rather than the growth of the domestic league. And the numbers are encouraging. Football is the quickest growing team sport in the United States. According to a poll conducted by Gallup in 2019 in comparison to 2012, 52% more US adults considered themselves soccer fans, versus the 47% increase in ice hockey, 27% for basketball, 8% for baseball, and negative 7% for American football. Participation has grown significantly too. According to the same Gallup poll, between 2002 and 2019, high school participation in soccer grew by 32%, far ahead of baseball, ice hockey, basketball, and American football. In terms of viewership and preference, soccer still lags behind the three traditional US powerhouses. And by some distance. Around 37% of Americans describe American football as their favorite sport, 11% prefer basketball, and 9% say baseball. Just 7% described soccer as their favorite sport, only enough for fourth place. Interestingly though, although perhaps not surprisingly, when adjusted to include only America's Hispanic population, that number rises significantly. 57% of Hispanics polled describe themselves as soccer fans, and 59% claim to be fans of American football making the two sports a close first and second. The Hispanic population is also by far the US's fastest growing. In fact, according to work conducted by the Pew Research Center, it reached 62.1 million in 2020, which represented growth of 23% across the previous decade and was significantly more than the US's 7% of total population growth during the same period. But there are also other factors at play in the game's growing popularity. According to The Athletic's Paul Tenorio, accessibility to games and leagues has been a major factor. We can turn on the television on a Saturday morning and watch games from the Premier League, the Bundesliga and La Liga. And unlike fans based in the UK who are subject to the 3pm Saturday blackout, American viewers also have the choice of every Premier League game each weekend. They can watch what they want, rather than simply what's been scheduled. And that's very different to the US television landscape of the 1990s. Tenorio was a big fan of Francesco Totti during his teens and remembers having to buy individual Roma games on pay-per-view for $30 a time. He also recalls having to learn about the Premier League through year-end VHS tape reviews, rather than the live coverage that the current and next generation of US soccer fans experience today. The quality of that coverage matters too, as does the publicity supporting it. When it was announced that NBC had spent 250 million euros over three years on acquiring the Premier League rights beginning in 2013, Part of the marketing for the deal involved a vast billboard of Gareth Bale in New York's Times Square. The most recent renegotiation of that contract, which was announced in late 2021, saw NBC commit to paying $2 billion over six years for the Premier League, which does help to quantify the growing interest. During the 2021-22 season, NBC announced that across all platforms, it was averaging 507,000 viewers per Premier League match. For context, in the UK and according to Nielsen Research, matches shown on Sky Sports during the 2019-20 season prior to the pandemic averaged 1.9 million viewers. And the game also enjoys some advantages over other American sports, which helps partially explain its growing popularity with younger people. In research published by Morning Consult, 47% of Generation Z respondents to a survey, i.e. those born after 1997, identified as soccer fans higher than all other sports with the exception of American football. Now, one reason for that might be, while baseball and American football games often vary in length, a football game, with its continuous clock, will only last for 90 minutes. That suits a generation for whom there's much more choice within entertainment and perhaps are willing to give up less of their day to watch sport. And FIFA matters too, the video game as opposed to the governing body. The EA Sports title is typically second only to the Madden NFL series and units sold in the USA. 
It provides an important gateway into the sport and initial contact with teams many thousands of miles away. Together, all of these factors present an encouraging picture. Soccer is nowhere close to challenging the dominant US sports, and most likely, it won't do anytime soon. But its growth potential, and the extension of the trends it continues to benefit from, should only see its popularity accelerate ahead of the 2026 World Cup, which it will host with Canada and Mexico. If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you did like it, you might be interested in How to Watch Football, TIFO's illustrated book. It's 52 rules for understanding the beautiful game on and off the pitch, and it is the perfect holiday gift. How to Watch Football is out now in stores and online. See the link in the description to find out more, and thank you for watching today's video.